Since I have a cross-country background, I'm very keen to try out new hardtails and also new cross-country bikes. And this is one of the newest ones on the market. That's the specialized Epic World Cup, which is very special. Yeah, and we really need to discuss some of the details of this bike. This is a demo day for specialized bikes that I just happened to swing by when testing another bike. Hence my weird outfit. I've heard about this bike and since I like the old Epic Evo so much, I just have to have a quick look at this top end Epic to see what all the fuss is about. So I'm only doing a short run here just to get a feel for the suspension. And uh, it's really rapid bike, I can feel that straight away. Wow, this is what it should feel like. Loads of support. Yeah, right from the start I can feel this is a extremely fast bike. And this bike replaces the Epic Hardtail. Uh, but it has got a 60 millimeter shock in the rear developed by RockShox together with SRAM. When it comes to cross-country racing, I'm only a layman, so I'll keep my futile explanation of what's going on with suspension on a rudimentary level. I'm also kind of stupid, because when specialized representative started to explain all the details and set up the bike for me, I didn't realize how special the fork and shock were, so I never filmed that part, which is the most interesting part, but I'll try to explain anyway with borrowed images. Let's start by saying, setting up the suspension on this bike is very different. In the rear, there's a single pivot suspension design. The top tube is hollowed out to accommodate for the proprietary shock and the tiny swing link. The rear travel is 75 mm. There is a 110 mm fork up front with an updated brain damper, which we will talk about in a moment. The shock is a collaboration between Specialized and RockShox. It's called Sid Lux World Cup Integration Design, WCID for short. It's a narrow but long shock body. Gone is the brain function, which might be a good thing from a maintenance perspective at least. Servicing a brain shock is notoriously expensive. The function of this new shock should still work in a similar way though. Suspension when you need it and fully locked out when you don't need it, without having to resort to any manual remote lockout. There will be no new Epic Hardtail, since this Epic will behave like a Hardtail bike when you need it to. As far as I understand, there is no connection between the positive and the negative chamber in this shock. They're completely separate. There's a bleed valve further down on the shock body, and when pushing that valve with a hex gear or something, ambient air enters the negative chamber and allows you to tune the negative spring independently. The process starts with releasing all pressure from the positive chamber, compress the shock and then use the bleed valve. The more you compress the shock before using the bleed valve, the less firm it gets. The plushes setting will give you about 10% sag. In the other extreme, there will be almost no sag at all, which again makes the Epic World Cup very close to a hardtail. There's also the possibility to use volume reducers or tokens to further tune the shock to your liking. I choose SAG somewhere in the middle. I don't know if that's right for me, but I just wanted to get a feel for how this contraption works. So how does all of this work then? Well, there's a threshold for when the shock is activated. A small amount of force to the shock does not move it. A violent movement will push the shock past the threshold, and then the shock moves more or less like a regular shock in its travel path. This only activates the shock when it's needed, and the focus is of course on efficiency, not on comfort. It's not a bike for the masses, it's a bike for winning races. Small bump sensitivity for us delicate and fragile weekend riders is not in focus. The Epic is aimed at short distance races, I'm thinking short track and XCO maybe. For marathon or endurance races, the regular Epic or the Evo are better choices. The updated seed brain fork works in a similar way, but the setup is more in line with how you set up a regular seed. I feel that there actually is some small bump compliance in the fork, but there's also that breakthrough point which you need to push through to use the travel fully. Weird, but that's how I experienced the fork on this very short test ride. 
At the moment, there are three spec levels to choose from. Expert, Pro and of course the Top End S-Works, which is the most lightweight of them all. I didn't weigh this bike myself, but everything under 10 kilos is featherweight compared to the bikes I normally ride. The geometry surprised me a bit. The seat tube is slack, maybe more slack than expected, but the head angle is only 66 and half degrees now. I own a hardtail with 67 degrees, which was bordering a trail bike only five or six years back. I guess there's still a search going on for finding the ultimate geometry, regardless of category of bikes. Anyway, I feel very much at home straight away on this bike, even if I just came from a big, fully-fledged enduro bike only a minute ago. Riding this bike is a revelation, and I truly enjoy this moment. It makes me want to go back to do more cross-country riding, you know, covering more ground, faster, and feel that immediate response from my inputs. But maybe the regular Epic or the Epic Evo with a dropper would suit my riding style better. I'm not a hardcore racer after all.